Were you going to ask if I included in the recording? Yeah, do you include this pre <laughs> pre game banter in the recording? <laughs> nah, usually um, I don't have out of game stuff in the recording. No, at least I try not to. I have like um, maybe like fifty hours of footage, so I can't obviously cut every single out of game thing. Especially if we like well, take shit, breaks. So much. Mm-hmm. Have we really have like fifty hours of content that we? Hold on. I mean, we've played for like probably ten hours every weekend for a few months now. You make so a good point. I've got. Uh, let me see. Yeah, about. Uh, so we have like one hour of parts that I cut them into. So about fifty hours now. Jeez. Maybe a bit more than that. Damn. Yeah, anyway, uh, so we have everyone, and is everyone ready? One in chat, please. Ooh. We don't have enough for a level up, do we? No, not yet. Uh, that makes me sad. Next what up, we have some great spells. <laughs> uh, not next up, level up. Yeah, level eight's an interesting level for me. Alrighty. Yeah. I get like twice as dangerous in melee combat because I get the one d eight on melee attacks, just extra oh, damage for free. Extra fire damage. Yeah, and I also like in, instead of taking ability score increase, I'm gonna take shield master, so I can smash people prone as a bonus action on every turn. <laughs> it's just rude. <laughs> okay, so I believe in the last episode of Cursing, we just spend some time in the trident and we sort of pick up some contracts after doing a bit of housekeeping and shopping and whatnot uh, witnessing some executions as well of various members of the trident and eventually you, de- you all decided on the contract of essentially recovering the fangs of a serpent in the forest of vita however unfortunately as you go into the forest of vita you're beset by a horde a literal swarm of spiders leading to the death of a certain member. Yeah, that happened at the end of the last session. That's adorable. (laughs) And then as you all were sort of trying to perform the funeral rites for your party member, a sudden skeletal lich appeared and stole the body right in front of your eyes. still think that was really rude. It was not a good day. Uh, so are we still at, like, the edge of the forest? Yep, uh, you're, you're all just about maybe 100 feet away from the edge of the forest. And I believe it's also around 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so we've had our moment of silence for the fallen uh, and Tobias is like all magic tantrumed out uh, just knackered now and uh, just gives uh, Lauren and Aiden a look and says uh, we should uh, go rest and figure out what to do next I have no objections. Yeah, I wouldn't mind sitting there for a while. And out comes the wineskin. <laughs> uh, head back to the house we stayed at. The best bit. Alright. Uh, uh, that house gives me the heebie jeebies. Better than out here in the forest. Yeah, but the dude got stolen. So you can see uh, the house sort of off, far off in the distance, and you all sort of like trudge along fairly slowly. Uh, in the cold of the winter, eventually you reach the house, and uh, you sort of see, you sort of see, um, 
What do you see? That is a good question. You sort of see to the side of the house a freshly dug grave, and uh, Agron, the 20 something year old, is standing next to his father, Aston. And they're all sort of peering down into the grave as a uh, fairly well dressed cleric is standing in front of him, sort of reciting the burial rites. And you all sort of look this cleric up and down. What do you look like? That's you. Um, I look like that picture I sent through earlier. Oh, I was hoping you would describe it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that, that really helps us. I will describe it. So imagine a slender um, uh, cleric, oh, sorry, slender half elf about. Five foot eleven, um, long blonde hair. He looks like he's seen some shit, but still only about oh, fairly reasonably nearly an adult. But he still looks like he's seen some shit. Uh, he has a mace down to the side of him, like beside his feet, uh, as well as a shield. And um, yeah, it looks very, very stern as he's performing his work. don't want to interrupt what's going on there so like Sebastian's gonna keep his distance till they're done yeah I think we just leave his business and continue on our way <laughs> <laughs> what time of day is it I look up to the sky about 2pm 2 2 PM. <laughs> okay we don't have enough time to get back to the trident do we no nah. it'll be dark good. before then and I don't want to be out at dark let's just give it a these guys some space while they say their farewells whilst you're can... hovering near the front of the house you're all able to pick up bits and pieces of the sermon Gaius what do you say as the final words to bearing this man named Alaric so, our lord and saviour Gertis or any god to which this man doth claim May you receive your pupil or your child into the earth from whence he came and save his soul, much like he saved everyone around him. In your holy name, Amen. Agron and Aston look to one another and then they sort of <laughs> shrug a tiny little bit. Uh, Gaius, you can roll me a insight or perception to hear what they say to one another. Yep. They are the same. Oh, we're all on insight because I like insight. Never mind. <laughs> I wish I was a halfling. <laughs> Thorin gets autism. <laughs> Gaius? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Insight or perception? Oh, oh, you want an insight from me. Sorry. Insight. I'll get rid of that. Alright. Advantage. You hear Agron say to Aston, he's just sort of like, Does this guy really know what he's doing? Look, we have already paid him five gold. I don't want to complain. If he's performing the rights, he's performing the rights. Oh, Alright then, I guess. And they both look towards Gaius and they gesture for you to fill the grave. I, I lean over to Thorin I do say. So. I just whisper five gold. For five gold, I could, could like say some gibberish over a body. We are in the wrong profession. Thorin rubs his chin. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I didn't even say the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> So before long after the grave is filled, Aston still just remains on the spot just peering over the grave and uh, Agron comes up to the front and he sort of makes eye contact with each and every one of you. And then he raises an eyebrow. Where's Carlius? Uh, he didn't make it. The spider's got him. He has a small look of disbelief in his face. 
so soon, but we just had a drink but a day ago. It was... It was very abrupt. Still a bit shaken by it. Well, the beds are still set out, so, I mean, I assume you guys are going to head back to the main city after <sighs> that. Uh, if, if you don't mind uh, us intruding, uh, yeah, if you don't mind us uh, intruding, and we'd appreciate uh, if you let us stay the night here before we figure out what to do tomorrow. It's been a very long day. Yeah, it's fine. Don't, don't worry. I'll go talk to my father about it. Just go on in. Thank you very much. Uh, what does uh, that cleric look like he's doing? Is he just talking with the... Uh, other. So you see this cleric at the back sort of shoveling some more dirt and snow into the grave? You, if for everyone who sort of inspects him, could you please roll me a perception as well? That would be fantastic. Thank you. Interested? It's been a while since I've seen another cleric. Two. <laughs> Setting a president for the rest <laughs> of the uh <laughs> So for Tobias, you're more focused on the way he's shoveling the dirt and snow into the grave as uh up just in... like mm, look at those glutes <laughs> <laughs> as uh, up in Lutheria the funeral rites are performed much more differently you could crack a walnut but us. as for Thorin and Aiden uh, you guys are able to recognize that this man on several pieces of his armor are fairly white like some pieces of his armor are painted white with uh, various red embroidery on the edges. Hmm. Like, actually painted white? Yeah. And you're um, able to very quickly deduce that there is probably only one... Uh, that there is probably only one quote-unquote faction that goes by those colors. Would I be able to place that? You want to take a guess? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can do so without metagaming. <laughs> I, I don't know, no, um, no. Take a guess first and we'll see. Oh. Okay, um... You know, actually, now that I searched my brain, I can't think of anything. I mean, we, we heard him praying to Goethe's, so... I can assume he's a priest of him. Oh, I'm trying to determine what kind of priest. Like, he's not like me. One that doesn't <laughs> skip leg day. <laughs> Does this help? That's what I was thinking, but I was worried I was going to get it wrong and seem like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 200 XP you don't get. <laughs> Fair enough. Can we put a Thorin in the grave as well? <laughs> I willingly climb in. Do I, do I hear this? <laughs> Look, do I actually hear them say that? What, putting in the grave thing? Yeah. Probably not. Oh, okay. You should go talk to him. Why? He, he seems to You're a religious dude. Play to stereotypes us, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just assume that all. I just assume that you all just assume white that all... people know all white robed people. <laughs> <laughs> we all know each other, is that it? You're like some sort of clan. <laughs> uh, beautiful. I, I, I nudge Lauren in the back. Just, just look him in the eyes and just shrug. You can fucking talk to him. No, you. No, you. I'm bashful. 
<laughs> Tobias is just gonna <laughs> stand to the side until he stops. He finishes shoveling before going to interrupt him. Ah, uh, that's probably a good idea. I suplex Thorin. I don't resist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before long, guys, you finish shoveling the grave. You pat it down. Yep. It's quite well done. And Aston sort of gives you a nod of approval as he heads to the back of the house. Outside, like the backyard, not inside the house. Okay, well, I pick up, I'll return the uh, shovel and what have you to its location and go to pick up my things. Uh, once he's uh, not talking to anybody or digging graves or anything, uh is going to uh, walk over. Uh, looks a bit haggard, having uh, seeing as the day is eaten off, uh, but walks over. Uh, Waves uh, in greeting and says, uh, uh, hello there. Um, I'm Tobias. <laughs> oh, hello, Tobias. My apologies. Um, I'm Gaius and I stretch out a hand. I'll take it, give it a shake. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you and everything, but, um, uh, we lost a friend in the forest uh, earlier today, and seeing as you're, uh, well, uh, seeing as you're here, and our friend was uh, from the Trident, uh, could we trouble you to maybe give him a proper send off or something? I'm of not course. Sure how this works. No, I'm, I'm. I'm truly sorry to hear about your friend as well. He uh, he sounds like he meant a lot to you. Uh, but absolutely, I'd be too honoured to um, provide a, a farewell uh, for your friend. Uh, that's uh, good to hear. Thank you. Um, do you mind uh, if we wait till tomorrow to do that, though? We've been through the ringer today. Uh, of course. I think there has been enough emotion for everybody concerned. And I sneak it or not so much sneak a glance, but motion with my eyes over to the uh, to the house where uh, the other two men are. Yeah, Tobias uh, nods in understanding. Uh, good, uh, thank you. Well, uh, I'm sure, well, uh, we're going to stay uh, here for the night. I'm sure that they wouldn't mind uh, putting you up for the night as well. Uh, Seeing as I don't think you'll be able to make it back to the Trident before sundown today. Uh, what time is it in the afternoon? About two. West? Oh, about two, yeah. Uh, so no, that is that is actually a very good point. Uh, I may stretch my uh, contract a little bit in that regard as well. So, uh, what, are your friends over there with you or? Yeah, I like uh, half turn and motion uh, Thorin and Aiden over to introduce themselves. I approach. As do I. And now that there is a fellow cleric, I must establish dominance, so I give him the <laughs> hardest handshake I possibly can and limp noodle it. <laughs> and I return in kind. Um, opposing strength checks? Yeah, I gave you like the accidental limp hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's right I'm just lulling him to a false sense of security this is all intentional you had to beat a five surely oh there we go you have rolled win with a five some reason. win with a five win with a five <laughs> <laughs> Let me, I'll come on you there's only one way you're gonna win with a five I think Oh no, you may actually win this one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's a nope. Thorin, you try to establish dominance, yet as soon as your hand reaches into the iron grasp of Gaius, you hear a small faint crack as each and every knuckle in your fingers are cracked on the spot. And then as you pull your hand away, despite the fact that you're wearing heavy steel gauntlets, your hand is now numb and unable to hold anything. 
Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I really did not mean to do so. Uh, this is out of character question, but um, did he take any damage from that, or is it just nope. just disabled? Soreness. I am now unconscious. <laughs> 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 uh, I want to like try and like one day. Like grip my teeth and like turn around and be like, it's fine. And then while my <laughs> while my back's turned, just subtly try and like cast a couple cure wounds and so just be like, it's okay. <laughs> just like rubbing my wrist, like ow. <laughs> Does my hand feel better? Uh, with a thirteen, yeah, it feels cool. much better. You can now feel your fingers; they, they tingle a little bit, but uh, you do regain use of them. Oh, Christ. All right. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice roll, by the way. Um, so, um, as I was saying to your friend uh, Tobias here, uh, my name is Gaius. And uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. And you, mysterious cleric. Yum. <laughs> I'm not I'm not that mysterious. I'm just a humble cleric serving uh, serving the great man Gertus. What are you doing out here? Um I was I was in the area and um, I received word from a uh, gentleman inside saying that he had a um, a family member that he wished to farewell and well I was truly honored so I, I did what I could to give him a proper farewell. But like you were just in the neighborhood? I've been traveling through from uh, from the Holy See myself. Just happened to be in the area at the right time, I guess. Right. Do you have any plans for the next few days? Um, I'll be here for another two or three days at the moment, yeah. Sure. Because, uh... You seem capable enough, and I look at the, the shield and... What weapon is he holding? A mace. A mace. Yeah, so I look at his gear and I'm like, you seem capable. Um, well, I'm not, I won't ask you to do this for free, but I'm sure my friend Tobias mentioned that uh, a friend of ours recently... I don't know how to word this. Thorin kind of just looks down. <laughs> I explained, yes. Okay. Um, there was a complication towards the end that... I, I would feel more comfortable with another holy man. I, I place a hand on his shoulder and say, it's okay. I... I uh, as I said to Tobias, I, again, I'm truly honoured to... Um, provide a farewell uh, for your friend, uh, especially having only just met. Thank you. Uh, so your friend, he, again, he seems like someone who meant a lot to all of you. He did. Yeah. Didn't know him for long, but uh, through adversity, we uh, bonded, I think. It, it's I, almost I, as though I can still hear him. <laughs> I saw and I say, yes, adversity truly is the glue that binds all people together, especially like in that. combat. I, th I think uh, you'll find that sinew, actually. Ha 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 ha! Like, it's Poker just face. completely, like, straight face. Poker face? Just, like, <laughs> totally dead hand, just, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Humor circuits activated. <laughs> um, we don't have the body. I raise an eyebrow and say, you, you don't. That's where the complications I spoke of uh, come into play. Was oh dear. Gone. But why would, why would they steal a body? I feel like this is a conversation to have 
perhaps in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> Tobias is like ashen faced and yeah. bloody everywhere, so Tobias nods I'm... and says, uh, Yeah, I, I would, wouldn't mind having an early uh, rest. That's all yeah, right. I, I nod and agree and say, Look, I do think everybody's had enough uh, emotion and sadness today. Let's um, let's try to enjoy what, or not enjoy, but try to get through what's rest of, what's left of the day. You hear the front door of the house open, and the sound of a rolling barrel as Agron sort of comes out of his house, and he sort of stands in front of the lo- in front of the lot of you and says, "Look, um, we don't exactly have enough water to spare for the lot of you, but." We do have a lot of ale, and should you need it, you can drink it, or use it to wash yourself off. I would not mind some ale. Uh, he sticks a cork in it, and it makes this sort of sound, and then <laughs> gl- 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 as a uh, ale starts spilling out onto the floor initially, then he procures some mugs, fills them up, and hands it to you guys. Cool. <laughs> it's no lemonade, but Tobias will have a drink. Hey! <laughs> There's a bit of lemonade in there now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, yeah. well. Welcome to the team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take a mug as well, and I'll say oh, thank you. Thank you all, and have a drink. Yeah, I've, I've had a bad day today, so I'm going to prepare an action to if anybody seems like they're getting sick or uncharacteristically woozy, myself included, I am going to lesser restoration them because this place is freaking me out. I don't know, I don't know why, but I feel like they're going to try and poison us. <laughs> As you all start to take your drinks, Aston sort of comes back and he is, like sniffles a tiny little bit, but then you see him sort of procure uh, five sort of like five foot poles, five of them. I was going to say 10, but that seems a bit long. Anyway, <laughs> he holds it out in front of you, and then he just shrugs a little bit and says, You know, my dad and I, we used to go flogging out back. It would mean a lot to me if you would all join me for this. Flogging? Yeah, it's a simple game. I can show you just over there. Agron, bring the barrels. And Agron just shrugs. Sure. Who are we flogging? Do, do, do you guys follow? <laughs> I don't recognize this game, but I will come along and see what's happening. Alright, he leads you out to not the main road, but like slightly further away towards where his field would be. I literally just made this map in the last two minutes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, he, pro- <laughs> he literally uh, procures. So, Agron starts setting down barrels of ale. Apparates out of seemingly nowhere. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Yeah. I know, right? Nah, ale. Seems like a marketable skill. <laughs> <laughs> then Aston procures from his pockets various wooden balls. See enough hentai to know where this is going. Then he lines them up, one by one. And then he points all the way up north. And then he says, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a hole all the way up there. Now the goal of the game oh. is to use these sticks to hit the ball in once per turn. And that's the game of flogging. <laughs> from where I'm... I'm absolutely down for a, for a round of flogging. Get it? From golf where I'm from, good sir, it's called golf. <laughs> <laughs> how different our cultures are. <laughs> Respect the traditions. I have a culture shock, long shot, help me. <laughs> <laughs> the balls are black. <laughs> right. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Out of character, the way you would do this is... So you hit the ball, up, you, see, you measure the length of wh- where, how long you want to hit the ball. Then you roll the dice equal to that length, and that's how far it travels. 
But if you get a nat 20, it's always a hole in one no matter what. Ooh. Okay. So is it like an attack roll and then a damage roll? No, no, or no. A... Like, like if I if I want to hit this 48 feet, I just roll 1d48. And whatever I get is how far it travels. So you can fuck it up and get ah. one feet. Okay. I feel like I'm just going to immediately try to just... Yeah, just like 1d101. Yeah. So you can all line up and, uh, one at a time. One step back. Who goes time. first? It's moving in up. Left to right? Sounds like a plan. Ast Aston what? steps in as well. And he goes, what let's make this there? a little tiny bit interesting. And he holds up a single gold coin. Just a sure. tiny bit. Oh man, I can't resist the wager. I pull out a gold coin as well. He puts it on the barrel. I also pull out one of Thorin's gold coins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, excuse you. <laughs> yeah, I'll add a gold coin. Yep, yeah, I'm adding one as well. Yeah, I'm going to add to the pot. Alright, so there are five I'm gonna gold coins. I'm going to put in two because I'm a high roller. Okay, there are six gold coins in the pot. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Alright, from left to right. So guys, you can go first. Alrighty, so essentially we roll whatever distance we want mm -hmm. as like a, a 1d100 for 100 feet. Yep. And so forth, okay? Yep. So it's about 101, 102 feet. So I'm going to roll a 1d. Oh, 1d. 130. 47. Alright. It travels a good 47 feet. I'll move the ball. So you make this sort of sound and it rolls off into the distance before coming to a stop. Then it becomes Doran's turn. Cool. I am going to. <laughs> If I were to cast a magic weapon on my stick, <laughs> <laughs> would it make it easier to hit? No using your god-given powers to win a game of amateur, uh, amateur uh, golf, Thorin. Okay. It's not called golf, thank you very much, Tobias. <laughs> it's called vlogging. Sorry, force of habit. <laughs> vlogging. I'm gonna put a you bit of oomph into this one. Smash! That was a good 68 feet, as you two make the same sort of sound. No, that does not mean coffee. What do you want? I like to imagine he's talking to a person, not his dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it Stop rolls that really far, up. and then it becomes Aston's turn, who's gonna roll. A whopping 182 feet, and Holy flies shit. out of here. <laughs> It flies all the way far out, so far out <laughs> that I need to be right back because my dog needs to go out. <laughs> that was the best timing for that bark, because I just imagined him hearing Yeah, that was just a dog somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the sound it makes as it flies through the air. 182 feet. That's the hardest anybody has ever hit anything. <laughs> it's like, you'd go to a driving range and hit, like... <laughs> Just, oh god. And it's just a guy, stick with a wooden ball. Yeah, imagine if you use an actual golf club with a flyer in the world and nail it in the back of the head. Yeah. I think the furthest I've ever hit in my whole life is like 150. And that's with like a proper golf club and a proper golf ball. This guy is just fucking beasting out. And just. <laughs> ah, smash! Is he secretly a barbarian? Is he wearing a shirt? I need to ask West this when he comes back so I can find out. <laughs> <gasps> I should use my artisan's blessing and make the stick a golf club. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> the turn would take an hour if you did that. What? I mean, I don't mind. Oh, right. right. <laughs> It's just, just like sitting just like real flogging. <laughs> you know what I should do? I should cast fabricate and just like have a little channel that just appears underneath <laughs> the ball that just allows it to roll the whole way in and then seals itself up afterwards. <laughs> Why 
Why is there two Aiden Longshores? What do you mean? There's three. There's one at the top as well. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Did someone feed Aiden after midnight? <laughs> <laughs> A round of applause for that one. <laughs> that was pretty good, actually. I, I knew I did something wrong. Shit. <laughs> Alright, back to the Why are there oh, three man. long shores? There's two down the bottom and there's one up the top with me. <laughs> hey, um, I'm trusting you to not do stuff like that. Okay. It's a poor decision. <laughs> uh, Aiden's turn, I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna change the balls to be controllable by you, by you guys so I don't have to. They should be able to move those ones. Wise choice. Oh, there's two T's, I know. You can have it be C, because yep. you're cleric. Or well, W for ward. Hopefully I may have changed them to the right Yep. Table. I can control mine, and I can't control anybody else's. Okay. Alright, yeah, sure. Uh, so next person can go, which happens to be Longshore, as uh, All right. Aston All right. starts walking off into the distance. So far away. What does that even say? I can't read it properly. 100.9. 100. 100. Right. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna... Oh yeah, is he wearing a shirt, West? Who? The guy who we're oh. playing golf with. Yeah. Oh damn it, okay. <laughs> Not a barbarian. <laughs> Aiden's ball disappears. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Also smashed it too far. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, really it's, like... to, it's really hard to actually get something to move, like, that far. Yeah, it's off the map. Yeah, it is actually off the map. Yeah, but like... get it, like, to the right off the map. So it goes all the way... Like, like 30 feet off. Uh, you, you hit it even further than where he hit it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just move Did he? It. I thought he rolled a 180. Okay. Damn. You, you lose your ball in the forest as well. And then... Uh, you hear the chuckle of Agron behind you as he takes another swig from his mug and it becomes Tobias' turn. <laughs> Does Tobias have a limit of how hard he can hit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. That's fitting. All right. It travels a good 39 feet as it returns to Guy's yeah. turn. If your ball leaves the boundaries, you are out. I imagine Tobias, like, did a really big wind-up and, like, like, like look looked strained in the face with this massive swing and just like nicked it and just span <laughs> a measly 40 feet forward so if it goes into the blackness it's out of bounds is it yeah it just lost. now the tricky part is it has to stop on the hole it can't go like past the hole that doesn't count okay can you guys hear my dad in the background yes yeah okay i might go to push to talk Alright. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> Alright, you get a good 22 feet towards the hole as yeah. it uh, becomes Thorin's turn. Alrighty, let's size this up. Fucking hell! My hand, my hand still hurts, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you like slipped and fell and just bumped it once you hit the ground. Yeah. It's initially hit it with the stick, it rolled away because my shoulder pauldron hit it when I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> Aston just further shrugs as his ball is out of play and it becomes Tobias' turn. The best of three. I 
swear to God, if he gets it in. <laughs> yep, that's a lot. Alright. That doesn't go very far at all. As <laughs> it returns to Gaius' turn. Do we have mulligans in this game of um, vlogging? I have any chance? no idea what that is. Uh, like, can you take the shot again if it only goes like two or three feet? No. Yeah, do over. Nah. Nah. Every okay. hit is a hit. Oh, uh, well. That's pretty appropriate for Tobias, I think. Two feet. <laughs> he, like, I mean, hits it, and the shock that runs up into his palms is like, ow! <laughs> the, pre the previous <laughs> swing scared him, so he undershot this one. <laughs> it was <a> splinter. <laughs> Feet. Getting conservative now, as it uh, becomes Doran's turn. That's more like it. Oh, how close? Oh, a little bit over. Oh. 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 Ali's still within play, and it becomes Tobias's turn again. Is it like real golf, where if you hit the hole and go over, it slows it down a little bit? I have no way of changing that. Okay. <laughs> We're calculating that. So I think that answered no. Alright, back to For flavor it does. I would have hit it further, but I hit the hole. <laughs> Ugh, can't even do a decay function. No, I'm going to try and go for it. Just imagine, like, West sitting there every time we hit the ball, just, like, furiously calculating, just... Oh, God. Oh, another conservative... Wow, two 15s in a row. You get an inch ever so close <laughs> to the hole. Actually, and, uh... at this point, can I be like, hey, Longshaw, come here. Well, one second. And I'll move a little bit down away from this guy, actually. And I want to whisper to him, like, quietly. Be like, hey, uh, this stage was broken, obviously. I'm not going to actually whisper because no one will hear me. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, I've j I just got an awful idea that popped into my head. And I blame today's experiences for making me think such awful things of these people. But yeah, do you think they're trying to delay us from going inside? The cynical. Yeah. So Dude, cynical. Today's... <laughs> I've been burned enough times. You might be right. <laughs> yeah, openness and hospitality is so suspicious. <laughs> it is. It is this close to the trident. This In is what? actually the first time anyone's treated you guys with moderate decency. I know, it's weird. It's throwing me off. <laughs> It's the reason for my suspicion. <laughs> do you just want to go? Do you just want to go poke your head in the door and just check that things aren't? Yeah, I kind of do. All right, I'll tell you how the game goes. <laughs> Let's try and slip away. All right, and I'll go take my spot next to you. Just here. Actually, I'll go sit on the other side of him. So and just make small talk so he's not looking in that direction. Yeah, so sure. He's looking my way instead. Hmm. Aiden, as you sort of sneak through the door, you notice from the corner of your eye, Agron just eyes you as you go in, but he doesn't do anything about it. Mm. It looked pretty valuables. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aside from barrels of ale, you don't really find anything like. I stuff my pockets with ale. <laughs> But yeah, that's literally it. Just barrels and barrels of ale. Some bags of barley and wheat. Bags of sugar, too. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I just put as much ale as I can carry in my pockets and slosh back to the <laughs> foreign. Oh, we're all clear. Cool. And uh, it, it's your shot as well, Thorin. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, let's go for middle. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah! Oh, 
I nine think feet. That counts. Clunk. Oh, that's very close. One more turn. <gasps> One more turn. One more turn. Oh, right uh, on the Tobias. lip. Tobias. Just 1d1. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm just going to do 1d1 because I, I, <laughs> it's impossible for me to miss. <laughs> Unless Tobias gets it in first. Can we knock each other's balls around? Is this yeah, like golfing with friends? Can I, uh... <laughs> No, I screw them both over. <laughs> <laughs> Just smash it, 1d500. Consistently low rolls with the bias. It's fitting. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully Slow and hope. steady wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes Gaius' turn. Oh no. God damn it. <laughs> oh. 1d6000. <laughs> hmm. No, you know what? Rolls a one of averages. And then gets exactly two. <laughs> oh, oh we both just balancing on the lip or is he in? <laughs> yeah, it's 2.5, so you're actually just on the lip as well, so... Oh. Thorin might win now. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, you can do your 1d1, it'll go in. I'm pretty sure it does. I went in! Oh, yeah, oh my god! <laughs> Hang on, it's oh, a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, also, it's also the highest possible roll, technically, in that 20. Uh, Thorin, you are six gold richer. Clink! Hey! Throw my hands up in the air. Tobias does a golf clap. Give me a flog clap. It's a flogging clap. Yeah, I mean a flogging clap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Aston sort of just like gives you a little nod as he procures his uh, stick again and he starts walking back to the starting line. Uh, it's been about two or three hours of a game has passed and everyone is now, if you have continued to drink throughout that time, are somewhat tipsy now. I just had that one drink out of, like, politeness. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, same. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, that's, I read that's good. to get some of my ale. Like, where the fuck did it go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming both... <laughs> Thorin and Longshot have not gone easy on it. <laughs> and uh, as Aston sort of like goes back to the starting line, he's just like, I'll keep playing a few more games. You can join me if you're interested. Otherwise, you can head inside, take a rest. I might take a rest. Yeah, yeah I I'm going to retire. Thank you, for, thank you for the hospitality and the game. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thank him as well. And you guys go inside to take your rest as uh, he, you hear every now and again the sort of sound as he hits several more balls with his son, smacking balls with one another <laughs> out in the distance, in the cold. Um, I remember when my father and I would smack balls together. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so. Sorry, which one is the guest room there? West? Um, it's up for interpretation. Just wherever? We, we'd know, right? Because we spent the night yeah, here. Yeah, uh, so basically, typically the layout would be the room that's with all the dining tables and the kitchen and stuff, that's the guest room. 100%. Okay. Because yeah, so, right. you want your guests to have somewhere to sit to eat and stuff. Uh, should we take watch tonight, or just can't get I think it's a good idea. I look around We are pretty close to the forest with the giant snake and <laughs> man-eating spiders, so... I've had enough of spiders, I don't want them to brock up on this house in the middle of the night. <laughs> See, this is the point where I raise an eyebrow and go, wait, snake, spiders... Is, yeah. is this how your friend... Um... What happened to your friend? Thor Thorin starts drunkenly embellishing. It's like, the snake's head was as big as this house! <laughs> you never should have opened the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> I roll inside. <laughs> 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 
I would say that beats my drunken deception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will disadvantage deception to see if I can sell this story. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> It, its head was as big as no. It was, yeah, it was twice as big as this house. Three times as big as this house. <laughs> <laughs> but its eyes were the size of beetles. <laughs> <laughs> its fangs were yeah. made of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> Come on, that got to be worth inspiration. Like, really though. upset about it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, but uh, everyone does get 300 XP, though. Hello. Sweet! 300. Ooh. Like the Spartans killing a million Persians. Cool. So what are we on? 27135. Two, what? 27135. Oh, 278? What? Yeah, Thorin, you're behind. Oh, Way what's... behind. <laughs> Alright, cool. I'm up to date. Cool. Yeah. Um, More than I thought I did. I might take first watch. Um, who wants to take second and third? Or I'll you might take third, I assume. Yeah. yeah. While this is happening, I'm going to say, geez, you really have been through a lot. Better say yeah. sorry. Aiden says from the pile of green sacks, I'll take seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll wake you up in a couple of hours. Guys, trust me. Even though we're sleeping in a relatively safe place, the amount of times where we have slept in a safe place and we took watch and it paid off has been every time, I think, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, yeah. Alright, so everyone goes to sleep except for Tobias. Tobias, do you just sit on the bed as you watch, take watch? I think I'll, like, lie down in bed but stay awake. <laughs> so it's not immediately obvious to anyone that I'm awake. <laughs> that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, so for the first two hours you sort of go through watch, uh, you sort of hear the front door open, like creak open, and then like some heavy set footsteps head off into, uh, not the guest room, but like the master bedroom just across the wall where you're at. Uh, and then like the creaking of the bed as someone sort of lays down. Only one person, not, not, not two. <laughs> then before the hour is up, you hear the same person stand up and then leave out the front door again. But then that stand of your watch. Okay, um, I'll go shake Aiden awake. And when he wakes up, I'll just say, uh, uh, nothing suspicious happened, nothing dangerous. Uh, one of our two hosts came in for a bit, but then he no, left. Um, so I'm not sure Aiden can roll a constitution save first. Okie dokie. Anything above a 10, you get up. Under it, uh... <laughs> oh. oh, that no. makes perfect sense. <laughs> Longshot does not waken from his drunken slumber. Just burp and brown bubbles come out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's that plan shot. Um... <laughs> By a slight, his <laughs> politeness wars with his fear of being murdered in his sleep, whether it'll be <laughs> nice or <laughs> uh, But eventually he goes over to Gaius and, like, shakes him awake and says, uh, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but Aiden is, uh, blackout drunk, and, uh, <laughs> would you mind taking the second watch? Oh, this is to me, is it? Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I was doing something else. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm happy to do that, so I can get up. Uh, in a couple of hours, wait Thorin for the last watch, and yeah. Um, nothing suspicious or odd happened uh, during my watch. Uh, during a uh, couple of hours. Sorry, how long was it? Like 20 minutes ago or something? Uh, yeah, about yeah. 20 minutes-ish, towards yeah. the end of your watch. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, uh, one of our hosts uh, left. I'm not sure where he went, but yeah, I don't know. Nothing dangerous happened. Okay. Well, um, I get up and so I don't have any sort of intention of falling asleep, I sit on this chair over here. Yep. And, uh, keep watch. <laughs> Guys, here's behind him, just, uh, spiders, uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Zake! <laughs> yeah. Hammer, uh, help me from the spiders! You can roll me a perception, guys. Of course I can. <laughs> I believe in you. You're a cleric. You should have high wisdom. Ayo! <laughs> you hear the creaking sound of the front door opening, just... And then very slow footsteps sort of coming towards the guest room. Then, in the darkness, I believe you have dark vision too. I do. Yeah, uh, so in the darkness you see a head sort of poke out from the side of the doorway. Uh, sort of in the middle of the doorway, only the head from the neck is what you can see. And then he, he just, in the darkness, smiles at you. And he goes... <laughs> Insight. <laughs> All of the insight. <laughs> hey! He goes, <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> he takes, <laughs> he, he I, takes a few steps. I just chuckle. He takes a few steps in and then sits down onto the chair. I, I just chuckle and say, uh, I wish I could drink, but not to excess like I used to do. It, it's so, easier for me to just have one drink and then be done than it is to try and dance with, well, you know, the story. Agron just sort of does a snow nod that sort of like takes a little bit too long to nod and then goes, <laughs> so how long have you? Practiced being a cleric. Well, I stopped practicing about a year after I started because I turned pro. But um, no, seriously, uh, I've been practicing for a good uh, 10 or 12 years. Actually, I first started helping my mother in the hospital because she had a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, ill and injured to tend to from the war. Mm -hmm. So... I gave her as much help as I could, but mm -hmm. we started seeing different, um, seeing different ways on things, and uh -huh. I felt it best to leave her, to leave her to do what she does best, and mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, why the Trident? Why not stay in your hometown? Just because of your mother? No, I I could quite easily look. We we disagreed, but we didn't leave on poor terms. It was more I wanted to try and find out more about myself at the same time. I see. Being stuck at being not cloistered, I guess, but being in a place like the Holy See, it's very rare to get a second opinion, mm. or even or even a variation on the same opinion. So, by leaving, I'm not abandoning what I know, I'm just looking for the other side of the story. That, that makes sense. I can, I can see it in your facial features. You're, you're not fully human. I, um, twit, uh, not twitch, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, rub the tip of my ears and say, yeah, I, I guess it is fairly obvious. And I, I try and hide it under a tuft of hair. So the people of the Holy See must be giving you a tough time. I have to say they weren't the most inviting, but once I proved once I proved myself, it was a lot easier to get by. Well, you certainly have my gratitude. And you have mine as well. I, I do thank you for for the honour uh, of allowing me to stay, even if it is but for one night for the moment. No, it's fine. You buried my grandfather. You performed the rites. That's all I could really ask for. It's a shame that you people don't drink much. You could have had a oh, marvellous friendship. Oh, no, believe me, my people do drink. It's, it's myself that doesn't drink too as much as what I used to. Ah, uh, I see. A yep. man of restraint. Well, very well then. 
Don't want to have two funerals, but I could join my father. He stands up and pushes his chair in, and he just gives you a half wave, not really looking at you, and just goes, well, have a good night, and then he starts <laughs> exiting the room. I, I give a really long... <sighs> After thinking, God, I, that could have gone so much worse. But uh, I look around, has anything changed since we've been talking? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. The room's still the same. Yeah, we're all on fire. <laughs> Your companions are still sleeping and snoring. That's all right. Yeah. Thorne has a knife in each eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> we just all switch places. <laughs> it's really funny to me. <laughs> but yeah, that's... It's just how Sorry. paranoid you've made us. <laughs> yeah, no. um, but that does bring it to the end of your watch and nothing else happens for the foreseeable night. Okay, so I then walk over to Thorin and I'm like, excuse me, Mr. Mister Thorin. Do I have to roll a constitution save or can I just get did a... You drunk, did you drink a lot too? I yeah. You said, yeah. Yeah, you have to do it too. A 10. Hey! <laughs> you barely, barely. To get up, yeah. Oh, oh you're oh. a little under the weather as well. Actually, do I, just... I notice? Do I notice he's under the weather, or is that just how obvious do you make it? No, sorry. I mean, I've been awake for like five seconds, so as obvious <laughs> as it possibly could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> what? Okay, I, I, I pat him on the shoulder and say, "Okay, uh, I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but it, it's your turn." Uh, that's fine. Rub his eyes. Almost sit up on the food. sit up on the side of his bed. I return to mine. No, that's gonna my go bed spoon there. with Longshaw. <laughs> no, that one is my bed, and I actually sleep like this because I want to be able to see the door. <laughs> yep. Right. So, Starin, as you're starting to take your watch, what do you do? I immediately eat a ration to quell the uneasy stomach. Yep. <laughs> Alright, so I will cross one ration off the thing. A party of Atari, there we go. And then I will roll a couple of athletics checks, or well, one really. Hey, it's better than zero. And then, I will put all my gear on and just start meandering around. Alright, you can roll perception first though. Cool. Ah. After performing your early duties and halfway through putting on your armor, you suddenly hear voices from the front door whispering to one another. But with a 15, you can't actually pick out the specific words. But you do hear people sort of scheming off in the night, talking ah. to one another. Just. I, uh, how far am I putting through my armor? Like halfway? Yeah, about halfway. Oh, uh, okay. Do I have any AC bonus right now, or is it like... Yeah, no? um... Or like you half? You get 18, right? Yeah, yeah, it gives me 8. Yeah, so, uh, 14. Okay. 14, I will pick up my shield for a 16, which is still pretty comfortable, mm -hmm. and then I will... Do I have disadvantage on my stealth checks? No. <laughs> oh, cool, alright. I will attempt to roll a stealth, but I will guide it to myself first, because I'm bad at it. Yep, never mind. I kind of just plink plonk, plink plonk. <laughs> I want to like peek my head around the corner. Okay, hello. Right. You oh. peek your head around the corner. You see the front door is left slightly ajar, letting in a small trail of like a moonlight. That's slowly starting to be replaced by the dawn. Mm. But you do still hear the whispering. Poke my head into a couple of these other rooms, I didn't see anything. Uh, I will... 
gingerly and absolutely not quietly at all poke my head out the front door a little bit. So the second you poke your head out the front door, you see you see Aston and Agron both look at you, and then Agron raises a finger up to his lips and goes. I don't say anything, but I perk my eyebrows. <laughs> and he uses the same finger to make a come over here motion. I uh, prepare an action to slap a bitch if thing goes. If thing's <laughs> And as you sort of get up closer, he leans in and whispers to you. Let's wake everyone up. Why? <laughs> we'll say there's spiders. And he laughs. Both of them very obviously drunk. I kind of just shake my head and I'd be like, we've, we've had a really, really rough day yesterday. I would very strongly recommend against that. You know my my friend in there, the uh, the one with the bow. Mhm. Mm he will absolutely ensure that you have a terrible day if you wake him up early. <laughs> you can roll persuasion. Persuasion, there you are. Oh, that's better. Tobias's lessons by fucking paying off. <laughs> <laughs> The both of them sort of looked at each other, and then eventually Agron just shrugs, and then Aston's like... He, he rubs the back of his neck and he's like, Ah, oh, I mean that other guy did perform the rites. <sighs> Alright, fine, fun's over. I think they've earned their, their, their sleep. And then he turns around and makes his way towards the barrel's vial, as Agron just shrugs at you and does the same. Alright, I'm gonna go back in and stop putting the rest of my armor on. And as you do so, nothing else happens for the rest of the foreseeable night. Alrighty. I like how well you know Longshore. Yeah. Just, just like it. An arrow in each kneecap before they can even blink. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did you do that, Longshore? Your bow's not even by your bed. It's just already back asleep. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, did you even wake up? As everyone gets their long rest, you can refill your health. Any spell slots you expended? If any. Sweet. <laughs> and Thank of goodness. course, half of your maximum hit dice. I don't think we spent any. I had one level one spell slot left at the end of that day. <laughs> Absolutely nothing else. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, Tobias, like, groggily wakes up, looks about. No one's been murdered in the night, so it's a good <laughs> start. <laughs> and, uh,. <laughs> I'll get up and into the table and eat a ration, some water. Do I still have to roll to get up? Oh, no, no. Okay. I'm sure you feel like shit, though. <laughs> you do. <gasps> <laughs> eat some food, long shot, and make you feel better. <laughs> the extra status effect. <laughs> Just onto the table. <laughs> <laughs> just face down to the plate. Hey West, I just remembered something. Yeah, what's up? Remember how I have that proficiency ring, but the purpose is to allow people to learn faster? Uh, yeah, for weapons, yeah. yeah. Do I have a better grasp of how to swing this longsword and my warhammer around? You, never... you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna try it out. I, t I take the ring off my finger, I don't unattune to it, so I can just put it straight back on. But I put the I just put the ring on the table, and I stand back over here. Nah, as soon as and the... I... Sorry, continue. Oh, I just give my longsword a swing or two. Uh, as soon as the finger... As, the... as soon as the finger leaves the ring, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you feel suddenly... It it's as if... Instead of being autonomous in the way you swing your sword, you suddenly have to think about it as you do it. Uh, okay. Alright. Well, I'll go back to the table, put the ring back on. I guess I need, need more practice. I haven't actually been doing this for too long, so that makes sense. That would be such a weird experience. Like, imagine wearing a ring that made you good at things. And you're just like, I have no idea how I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that goes for a lot of things you achieve mastery over. Just do it without thinking. 
Yeah, but like getting that without actually knowing what you're doing. <laughs> it would just yeah, it's why a lot of some people who are talented or gifted and they're professionals in their field, they have a really tough time trying to teach people. Just because your pro doesn't make you good at teaching. That makes sense. But uh, other than that, uh, if everyone eats their breakfast, please take off one ration of your inventory. You fill yourself up, mm -hmm. and uh, you hear the gong of the bell off in the distance from the tram, signaling the break of dawn. I don't have any more water. I'm thirsty as fuck. I'm sure, there's uh, they've got a water supply here. Oh no, I do. I do have some water. Never mind. But it's the last of it. I drink the rest of my water. Uh, okay, once everybody's, like, eaten and drank, uh, Spice says, uh, well, uh, should we, uh, head out, head towards the forest? So we're going back to the, back towards the forest? Well, uh, to, uh, to Carlos's grave, at yeah. least. Alright, hold on, wait, I'm just preparing some slightly more blasty spells. Mm. I want to look across the guys and be like, uh, it's fairly dangerous if you have anything that... Yeah, I'm... That's I'm completely understandable. I'm definitely preparing some combat spells just in case. Siri smite's so Didn't... fucking lame. <laughs> uh, healing on cutting ball, kill it. Oh, keep, keep going. I'm just looking at my spells. Uh, yeah, it's not too much of a walk to the edge of the forest where the grave is. Um, the real question is, do we go have Gaius give the rights for Carlius and head back to the Trident? Or do you want to try and go through with Mission. I don't know how I feel about the mission anymore, honestly. I'm... I'm not so sure about the mission either, but if I'm honest, I kind of want to burn all those spiders to ash. <laughs> yeah, and if we don't do it, then what did Kalias die for? I think we should go back to the Trident and come back with some slightly bigger guns. Because once we go back and be like, hey, there were hundreds of spiders that were bigger than us and a snake that's the size of a city and there was a lich that popped up at one point they might be slightly more concerned and they'll be like okay maybe we send you a little bit out of your depth maybe we should because i'm definitely coming back there's no way i'm gonna let that forest go unfucked full of spiders but i think that you know caution is the better part of valor and all that I nod and say, yep, for what you're telling me, I agree. Okay, uh... I'm sure, do you have anything to add? No, no, I, I think the run's right. Okay, uh... <laughs> I, pu I push a mug of ale of... Uh, a mug of ale, mug of water over across the table to <laughs> long <shot. laughs> I just put my face in it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, well, if everybody's eaten and watered, uh, mm -hmm. we leave before the day gets too long. Agreed. Okay. Then yeah. I'll move to the world map. Uh, as you guys sort of start to leave the AAA farm, you sort of see uh, Agron and uh, the other guy's name, West. I'm like, you can do this. Aston, that's right. So you see Agron and Aston sort of uh, just sitting on top of the barrels and they're still drinking. And they sort oh, of like wow. muddling to one another and like giving a little punch here and there. Every now and again, uh, one of them lets out a sob, but it's quickly dried up and then washed away with more ale. Are these guys even human? What the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. Truly these men live more in one day than we have in our entire lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you did travel the some 20 kilometers towards where uh, the dagger of Kalius is stabbed into the floor. And then you eventually see it. Uh, it's very lightly snow covered. Very lightly. You can still see it though. Uh, yeah, I uh, 
uh, gesture at the dagger, uh, like the guys to the dagger, oh. and say, uh, uh, that's all we managed to, uh, managed to do for him with what we had at the time. I nod solemnly and say, well, given the circumstances, you did more than enough, and, uh, I'm sure your friend uh, was it Kalias, your friend? Yes. Yep. I'm sure Kalias would be ever grateful uh, in the unknown. And uh, as I as I say this, I kneel to the right hand side of the uh, the dagger, facing it as uh, I provide I provide a silent prayer as a a way of blessing the site and. Uh, commending his soul to the heaven that he so chooses. Yeah. What level can clerics actually consecrate land? I think we could already do it. What now level that brings up we... a good question. What? Sorry? Is that an actual spell that you're using, or is that flavor? There that's is an a... actual spell called Hallow, but that's a that's a higher level spell. I was going to say, that's about level 5 or 6, isn't it? Oh, okay. But you do have, um, I mean, you're a grave cleric, so it'd shock me if you didn't have this, but there's a Xanathar spell that allows you to perform funeral rites. Yeah, there is, actually. Um, don't know if I've got it. Just so the ground yeah. won't be consecrated, but at least we can do that. Is yeah. it gentle repose or something? No. I think it's just called ceremony. Yeah, gentle Take repose it. is to stop uh, a body from decomposing. Over that's the space of ten days, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. What does funeral rites actually do? Like, what's the benefit of? Or is that's it just like burning a spell slot for our piece sake? No, it stops. It functionally, it stops people from being resurrected by necromantic magic. Ah, uh, okay. Which I think we could go for. <laughs> <laughs> no, my feels. What song is this? Um, you mean like the the song name itself? Um, well, yeah. I I played this when Freya passed away and then when you passed away. Oh, that's right. No, I'm sure I heard it before. I just couldn't think of ah, right, it. Yeah. Um, but that explains it. It's also a Dragon Age song. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Lion of Ferelden. Apparently it's an Origins. I've never played it, so I wouldn't know. But anyway, uh, is that an actual spell that you're casting, or is it for...? It's it's for flavour, to be okay. honest, because I don't have an actual spell as okay. yet. Yep, no, uh, oh, there we go. Hello's fifth level. So, yeah, definitely won't have it yet. <laughs> But can you can you do the burial rites thing as a ritual or something? Although I guess you need his actual body, don't you? Yeah, you need the well, body. Well, that's, that's it. For that now, I guess. Yeah. Alright. Then you finish performing the rites. You don't really feel any uh, feedback from what you've done. Uh. Tobias more ask for this, like, for our sake than Carlius's. Like, that's his thought process. Seeing it happen makes him feel a bit better about things. Yeah, there's more just like closure. Yeah. yeah. And you finished the funeral rites. I do. And I, I stand up and I guess thank you to probably the wrong word, but um, I stand up and say, well, I, I feel honoured to have performed this uh, for you. Thank you for taking the time out to do it. Thanks a lot to us. And and it means a lot to me as well uh, that Carlos obviously had some great friends uh, that were looking out for him and that he obviously cared for cared for a lot as well. I uh, 
fish around in my pocket for a second and pull out five gold and I hand it towards Gaius and I say, this is, I, I saw before, this is your fee, right? Alright, look at it and say, my fee. Yeah, the, the funeral rites that you performed for the other two back in that house, they give you five gold. I, I raise a hand and I say, no, no, please. Uh, I insist, I, I'm happy to do this for free. Alright. It, it's, again, I, I couldn't, uh, as much as I appreciate the offer, I can't accept it for this, uh, because you, as his friends, obviously deserve closure and his soul deserves that closure as well, given the circumstances. When you say that, Tobias, like, visibly grimaces, but then catches itself, looks away a bit, tries to hide it. Ah, uh, well, if... So, back to the trident then? I think so. I think so. We should tell people about what's going on here. We're still early in the morning. It's still like... We should be able to make it back, I think. Yeah. At least by nightfall. Yeah. Okay. Uh, head off. You all start to head off towards the trident. Some hundred kilometers. Oh boy, you're gonna reach just the outskirts. Of so as you're sort of traveling, oh, you already traveled 20 k's. Oh man. Yeah, sure. Why not? Outskirts. Of so as you're sort of traveling towards the trident, you sort of see every now and again a little bit more frequent than what you're used to. Uh, several caravans heading into the trident itself. Uh, a bunch of them sort of like guarded by various Vestigard soldiers, uh, but you do see that inside some of them are uh, siege equipment that are disassembled, whilst other wagons seem to be full of food and drink. The army is returning from L6 maybe. And they all seem very cheery. Uh, before we get to the uh, gate, I might uh, look around at uh, Thorin and uh, Longshore and say, uh, Do you guys think it's worth trying to smuggle some of your important equipment in? I might be able to teleport in ahead of you guys with something. I'm not sure if it'll work though. Well, the shit. All the shit that I really like is uh, already in their filthy clutches. And actually, yeah, the, the stuff that I'd want to smuggle in anyway, I um, actually already did because it was illegal for me to have to begin with. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind putting my hammer in the bag though. I mean, I don't know if. I can actually teleport in there. They might have wards or something. But Fair enough. Should do you think I should risk it? Or well, just do, do probably you want to take not. three or four bunnies because if it, if I come in with thirteen of them, they might think they're trade good. Maybe, maybe. Uh, might have. I, I'm thinking I should like hold off on it now, and I'll. Uh, yeah. I'll I don't try think it's worth the risk. Yeah. Try and get a sense it's of the rewards when we uh, when we enter. Yeah, like, then I'll know. Maybe don't smuggle anything and just teleport in anyway. And if like if you're questioned, you can just be like, "Oh, sorry, I forgot." <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> but like, like you don't have any if you don't have any contraband on you anyway. It's just like, oh yeah, sorry, I just figured it'd be faster. Yeah, but if there's right. wards up, I might just like die. I'm not sure how they work. <laughs> Maybe not die, uh, but at least bounce off. You might take some damage. Look, that'd be funny. But, but let's just <laughs> let's just walk in oh. this time. I'll try and sense if there's anything when we pass through, just so we know just for the future. Just imagine like the two guards standing at the front gate, and the guy just materializes twenty feet in the air and just. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh we got another one. <laughs> As you're like like one of those uh, bug zapper lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> As you're all sort of coming towards the trident and uh, you see the walls yet again in the distance, 
Uh, before you actually get up to the entrance itself, you all do feel a sort of like the earth trembling beneath your feet in a rhythm. And as you turn around and uh, sort of see off in the distance, not behind you, but like off in the other distance where the other road is, uh, you obviously see the tip top torso of Gertus walking about. And he too has a large army convoy in tow as they head towards the tridents. Ooh. My uh, jaw drops. Heads down, heads down, look down. Yeah, be inconspicuous. I'm completely the opposite. I stand bolt upright and just slack jaw. <laughs> That's uh, right, guys is seeing his god. <laughs> We're all trying to stay quiet. They're like, he sets off fireworks, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just but, thought uh, of something. Um... Everyone can roll perception as well. I would gladly roll a perception. Oh, I will be back in like a couple Idea. minutes. I've got headphones though, so I can still hear you guys. I just thought of something, Bongshaw. You look. You know, a bit peaky. Oh, quickly before uh, I go there. Your eyes. He's got. Uh, I, I he's just, got goggles. Uh, and I can pull my hood over my over my face. Yeah, he's got face covering. All right, be up here. Yeah, everyone but Tobias can. Well, poor Tobias. Gertus I've had good is luck just, so far. <laughs> Gertus is just way too far away for you to actually make out any details and <laughs> question whether you're what are you, what are you guys looking not. at <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, for everyone else they do notice the details on Goethe's and he doesn't take on the visage of and sort of like uh the god that he portrays like with the horns and the quote-unquote teenager face uh this time he actually looks a lot more old sort of like an older norse god with a huge beard oh and the beard itself is, you know, obviously very grey and whatnot, and his muscles sort of bulge. Hmm. I wish I noticed that so I could chime in on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I... I whisper in like a sage whisper sort of thing, There he is! Oh, isn't he so glorious? Oh, uh, he, he must be older because he got stronger from all the suffering and death. Like, as he gets stronger, he, like, grows up. What? What do you- what do you mean? Well, like, he- he- last time we saw him, he looked way younger. So, like, if he gets older, it must be, like, tied to his power. Oh, uh, um, I was too busy running for my life to notice. Does he look different? Way different. Uh. Like, he has- he has a beard now. That's strange. Maybe he did get stronger, or maybe opposite, and he used a lot of his power in the siege, and he's weaker now. Um, would Gaius, would Gaius know the answer to this, having been a disciple essentially? No, you're much more used to the form that he takes, which is the one with the horns. Okay, um, can I roll a like an Arcana check or something just to see if I can? pick up anything different. Uh, what are you trying to pick up? Oh, I'm trying to see if I can pick up the reason why he's changed. Oh yeah, sure. Go for it, Arcana. Just while he's rolling up, does the thing on his shoulder change in appearance at all? Nope. Well, with a 17, you're unable to determine as to why he has a different image. Okay. But I, I definitely know that it's not the same image as what it should be. Yep. All, all the portrayals. Okay. Of, it, it's sort of like you've never actually seen Goethe's the god in person in the flesh, but you do know the scriptures and writings of what he should appear like. Oh, of course. And seeing as he's yeah. literally the only giant that walks to land, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. But he just doesn't look for, like what you expected. And I basically relay this and go, huh, he looks a lot different in the book. Mm. He, lo he looked a lot different a few weeks ago. Wait, wait, you saw him? Yeah, he kind of tried to kill us a little bit. What did you do? Well, we were in Archerton. You were caught up in the war. Oh, that makes perfect sense. We're, we're I mean, I'm, I'm from Elsex, so is Thorin. 
Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, things happen. Borders change, but the land stays the same. I, I nod, so yeah. And quite often, burnt land actually grows back stronger anyway. Mm, the tribulations are the trials and tribulations are what make us grow as people. I think we're going to get along, priest. Thank you. And I smile for what is probably the first time that these guys have seen it. I, I, I pat him on the back and totally don't put a kick me sign there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, so as you guys sort of get even closer to the trident, uh, Gertus and his envoy actually reach the gates before you guys do. Uh, you see, instead of opening the man-sized doors, the whole entire steel gates open and Gertus sort of pass through. He even has to sort of duck a little bit under to avoid the top of it. And as he enters into the main city, you from this distance can hear his boisterous voice going, Ah. Oh. The people of Vestergaard, we have returned triumphant. Please take this opportunity to eat and drink as much as you can and celebrate the festival of the stars as we leap into a new year. Then he and his envoy sort of disappear even further but into the city as the large steel gates close. Hmm. He's a lot more, um, together than I thought he'd be. Well, the only time we saw him before, he was chucking fireballs at us, so... Yeah, yeah but just everything I've heard about him, I, I just assumed he'd be kind of like more of a mad dog kind of king at the actual ruling gets done by his underlings. True. Appearances can be deceiving. Yeah. I'm just waiting until Thorin gets back before I go to the map. I'm back. Hey, oh, welcome back. Oh, yeah. I assume you caught everything. Yeah, I can hear awesome. everything. Uh, so, uh, eventually you guys continue on to the Trident, and then you come into the outskirts of the Trident, and you see the farmland completely untended, save for a few patrolling guards. Most of the commoners seem to have left the hovels and whatnot. Uh, there appears to be a line at the front gates, but they seem to be moving very quickly into the city and then you eventually arrive into the outskirts of the trident hopefully i put you on the right map if i didn't i'll be sad oh. all right hopefully i dragged you to where you should be yeah yes all right so just imagine huge crowd everyone rome is like going into the trident fairly quickly Should we join them? Are we anywhere on the map? Right down the bottom. Oh, there we are. Well, yeah, let's should we join them? Yeah, let's go in. After you. Maybe after Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> As Come you on, pass the guard, he just waves you on. Says, oh, welcome to the Trident little head nod oh my god my map just disappeared oh no is everything crashing ah. right, okay I'll, I'll fucking add this issue sorry as you're as you get up to the front gate the first guard raises a hand in a halt gesture and says halt papers we have uh, those now <laughs> no you know <laughs> no we don't we've got a oh Fuck, Carl, he's the person who got his 
Oh no. That's funny because I've got a paper to help out here. Woo! <laughs> what do you God. do? I, I provide them with the visitor's pass. He takes a look at it and then goes, Oh, yep. Ah, uh, Gaius, you can go on through. Thank you. I'll take the paper back. Uh, you allow Gaius to go through. <laughs> then he looks at the rest of you. Papers. Um, I've got this and I fish out the little, uh, the, was it iron symbol? Yeah, the, uh, our the Net Adventures oh, Guild, uh, association thingy. Yeah. He turns to Agnes and Agnes checks her papers. What's your organization name? She says. We're with the Karazdine Union. Semper ad sinestrum. How long ago did you register? She says. Only a couple of days now. She flicks through her large list, sort of going straight to the S section, and then she thumbs through them and then goes, Sorry, I don't see you on the list yet. You're going to have to wait. Any idea how long? urgent news for the guild. Until we get an update on our list because I don't see you guys here. I'm sorry. I like how you actually have papers for your shuffling through. <laughs> I'm trying to shuffle through my notes because I lost it. <laughs> um, while I'm standing here, can I do an arcana check? See if I can detect if there's any wards around the gate. You can try. I think you and Arcturus did this the first time you guys came as well. I can't remember doing it, but I might have just forgotten. Uh, with that roll, you know that the glass palace near the center of the city emits this magical aura that surrounds the entire city. Can I detect what that does? No. I don't feel up to trying to teleport it, <laughs> no, I think. Um, Probably for the best. How would you feel about being catapulted? <laughs> uh, He's not a nine. I mean, I've got Featherfall. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. How far up does it extend? Can I tell? Like, is it a dome or a oh. ring around the city? Oh, it's a dome. Can I detect how far up it goes? Uh... You know that the trident sort of like, as you enter each individual district, it starts to rise up and up. It's like the palace is built on like this huge hill itself. So if I was to give you an estimate, even the wall, like Gertus, I forgot how tall I said he was. Very. Um, like <laughs> more than six hundred, more than six hundred feet tall. Jesus Four. Christ. And, okay, um, big walls. Yeah, and the walls themselves come up to almost his shoulders, really. Okay. So, ten, there's about... And this, that's that. just the outermost wall. It gets so higher it's like as five you go. Five to six hundred feet tall. Well, that's 60 stories. Okay. I could jump that. When he annihilated mm -hmm. the old king. Um, can, can I still see Gaius? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pull them back. Like they're just uh, like, oh yeah, guys, you can go through. Uh, guys, it looks like we're going to be uh, waiting a bit. Uh, oh, that's so good. Could you, uh, well, could you go in, find the Adventurers Guild, and get someone to come and talk to us? Because got fairly urgent news for them. Okay, sure. Who should I say is sending? Uh, Semper ad Sinestrum. Uh, tell them we were doing uh, uh, the uh, uh, snake teeth job. I, yeah, I, I give a, oh. a cheeky sort of a smile and say, uh, Semper ad sinistrum, of course. And I head in to deliver the news. We're classically trained, you see. <laughs> of course. Uh, I like turn to the guard, Bragnus, or whoever we're talking to, and say, uh, do you mind if we just wait off to the side here while we wait for someone to come talk to us? He just nods his head. Yeah, just step aside. Thank you. 
Can I load myself into the crossbow? <laughs> right, uh, so, Gaius? Yep. You head towards the Adventurer's Guild. Do you yep. remember where that is? I'm just approaching through the side of the tavern now. All right, so as and you sort of head into the trident itself, uh, immediately as soon as you enter the main street, you hear the hubbub of various noises and a cacophony of instruments happening off in the market district, but eventually it sort of dies down and into a low hum as you enter the Adventurer's Guild, and you see Captain Jardin sort of leaning over the table talking to Ellis and Vanessa over something. Cap, Sorry, where is this? Back here. No, just in front of you. No. no, 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 where are you going? Oh, it was in front okay, of you. so this right. is actually right. in the... Yeah, yeah. In here, okay. Yep, go on. Yeah, you're just leaning in, talking to them. That's about it. Oh, okay. So I walk up to say, because uh, this would be early to mid-afternoon now, wouldn't it? Uh, probably about 4 or 5 p.m. actually. Oh, okay, there we go. So early evening, yeah. Good evening. How's everyone going on this fine evening? Uh, Captain Jardin, he sort of leans up from the table and cocks his eyebrow at you. Doing well? And you? Here for the Festival of Stars, I see. Um, conveniently, yes, it is actually the, uh, the day for the festival, and I'm glad I made it. Uh, however, before I celebrate, I do need to ask a favour, and I turn to the, uh, the ladies behind the counter whose names I, out of character, can't remember, but in character, realise I wouldn't know anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, would any of you fine maidens be able to help me, or either of you fine fine maidens be able to help me. Uh, there is a, uh, a small group of gentlemen on the outside um, that need some assistance. Uh, they said their name was Semper Ad Sinistrum. Captain Jardin he puts his mug of ale down and then he places a hand on your shoulder and says, oh, I'll take care of this one, ladies. And then he starts to escort you out. <gasps> oh dear. What do you want, man? I just took you out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, she just wanted hugs. Anyway, uh, he oh. starts to lead you out to the front door, and he goes, so, what's this about? Uh, so, we're, oh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. Uh, the group, unfortunately, is one member less after going into the forest, and, um, they're not able to come inside as yet, uh, inside the gates, because the, uh, Apparently the records haven't updated from their guild membership. Oh, that's but, a shame. Uh, it is, uh, but what's even more pressing is they do have some news uh, to provide. Oh, that's and good. why I ask for your assistance. Uh, I'd like to hear this news. Come, let us make for the front gates. And I, I give a bit of a sigh and say, yes, well, it's definitely something you do need to hear. And move forward. Oh, you've already gone? Okay. Um, <laughs> complete. Just fuck me, I guess. So, event, uh, for everyone else who's waiting, about 10 minutes pass, eventually the man-sized gates open from the inside and Gaius comes out first, then Captain Jardin, and then he eyes a lot of you and then says to the captain, Oh, my good man, come now. That's the festival of the stars. You're really going to let them sit out in the cold? And then they go, Rules and rules, Jardron, you know this. And then he just sighs and then walks right up with the lot of you, sort of in front of you guys. So, this good man over here tells me that you guys have a bit of news to tell me. And first and foremost, I'd like to offer my condolences for your loss. Um, before I forget, during that 10 minutes while we were sitting out here, um, Tobias like snaps his fingers and says, okay, Seriously, this guy, this time, guys, we've got to remember to tell someone <laughs> about the time loop town to the south. I saw your bio. Completely really <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
also before they get back, uh, what was the name of that dude that they were hunting? That dangerous uh, one, the one with the bounty on his head, because I think that Ethereum. might. Yeah, I think that might be a lava. Have it somewhere. Avala, Avala that's it. Uh, Villamo was who hired us. No, no, not not with our job. Yeah, I thought I wrote it down somewhere. Um. Nangalor. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, Zachariah was the fugitive from Lutheria. Right. Might not be the same person then. Uh, by, the, yeah. by the way, worth mentioning, it was a lich. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so when Captain uh, Jadron arrives, uh, uh, first of all, Tobias like, nods, thanks him for his condolences, and says, uh, Okay, so uh, we were hired by an alchemist, uh, a Villamo, uh, to get some... Uh... Wait, was it Villamo, or am I... Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, yeah, we were hired by an alchemist, Villamo, to uh, acquire some fangs from this gigantic spider. Uh, snake. I'm just... oh, sorry. Yeah, there were spiders involved, <laughs> but the teeth are from a gigantic snake to the east. Oh, um, iron rankings. <laughs> um, however, the situation is more complicated than originally uh, described, I think. Um, First of all, Al, the person who guided us out there, uh, just disappeared on us without a word, without a trace. Oh. Um, that's I'm sure unusual. That's, yeah, maybe he was just really antisocial or something, but like, I don't know why he'd like teleport away as soon as we got there without any further instruction. You still have the contract on you, he says. Uh, I should have. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, I take out the contract and it to him. He grabs it and then he reads it for a while, and then he goes, hmm. I think I'll ask this Valimo a few questions. And then he hands the contract back. Anything else? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. The, uh, the giant snake over there is... Uh, it's the only thing keeping a whole bunch of gigantic spiders at bay from surrounding settlements. Spiders? Um, yeah, like hundreds and hundreds of really big spiders. Uh, uh, he raises what... a finger, then it sort of curls down and he lowers his hand again. Go on. Uh, they're what killed uh, Kalius. Um, but... How big were these spiders? Bigger than people. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's rather <laughs> unsettling. Yeah, tell me about it. Did they um, leave the forest by any chance? Did, did, uh, sorry, did, did they leave the forest? Yeah, did, did the spiders leave the forest? Uh, none of them followed us out of the forest, no. Oh, okay. Alright. Um, they're very afraid of the snake, though. They stayed away from it. Um... Yeah, so that's another wrinkle in the job. If the snake is killed, don't know what the spiders will do to the surrounding settlements, and vice mm. versa. If all the spiders are killed, don't know if the snake's going to rampage or not with its main food supply gone. I see, I uh, see. And the wrinkle, probably the biggest one, uh, after Kalius died, uh, before we could probably bury the body, a lich appeared and stole it away. How? How did the lich appear? You, t it, you it, need to explain this a little bit more. It appeared, like, uh, teleported in or something. It just was there. But how would it know where to go? Unless you've been... Unless you're being watched. Oh, we have a possibility. We have dealt with a lich before, and so it might be related. I think it was the same one, even. I thought we killed it though. Kalius smashed the phylactery, right? He did. Mm. 
Uh, Godwin thinks about this for a moment. He has given me quite a lot to chew on today. I had hoped you would have told me this at least a few days after the festival. <laughs> well, sorry, but it seemed important. Alright, well... Uh, I guess that's... Well, hmm. Once again, I guess I extend my condolences. Come with me. Yes, sir. He walks up to the guard captain and says, Look, of all the days, just this day, let them through. It's, it's, uh, I'll take responsibility, it's fine. And then he just walks in. And the guard just looks at a lot of you, eyeing the lot of you as all of you come into the trident. I'll move you all at once, just don't move your token. Where, go, go, go. Where did you go? <laughs> Where did you go? What the fuck? He's inside the gate. Oh, there we go. Alright, I'll look. Bam. Ew. They didn't, they didn't steal our stuff this time. Sweet civilization. And then Godwin starts walking, and then he says, Oh, um... Yeah, keep close to me. The guards won't like all those things you're carrying. Yes, sir. Uh... Oh, I'm just happy to be carrying. Yeah. He starts heading towards the Adventurer's Guild, and uh, you can see a lot of people heading towards the Marketplace, but he continues to gesture for you guys to come along. As you get to about there, you suddenly hear from the bar a fairly loud voice screaming, <laughs> You! Where the hell have you been? Oh, hello, Dor. There you go, to that. Please tell me it's not Freya. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the... the uh, Maxo sort of sprints out the door and points at Thorin. Yo, where the hell have you been? Uh. What? Why? What did you think? You could just keep the keys forever? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get the keys back. <laughs> oh shit! I immediately reach into my pocket and hand them back. But like, I'm so sorry. I thought we had this. For I thought we had this room for a couple more days at least. You paid for one day. Specifically asked, and for one lockbox. Oh. We just bailed on the city itself. I hand, I hand them back, and I bow so deeply that my forehead touches my angles. He holds out just... a hand and says, <laughs> And what about the extra night you stayed? I step forward at this point and say, How much do they owe? Six gold and four silver. I give it to him. Hmm. I actually okay, make it seven gold for the for the trouble. Guys, yeah, that isn't necessary. Mm. That's what I thought. Turns around and starts looking away. <laughs> I was so sorry. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, well, I guess we're gonna like need like to. A... He, I was, was going to say he seems like a good piece of work, doesn't he? I guess we're probably going to need to find another place to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan just yeah, eyes the lobby a little bit. That one. It's alright, they made copies of the keys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually? No. Oh, I, I wish I had the ability to do that. I can do that. What, hey, what I am chaotic. I can absolutely do that. So, Jarvan steps up to the table. Are you coming, priest? Yeah. And then he leans priest? into the spots that he used to Where about are you? <laughs> Where does it just actually go? Like, what the fuck? Down here, dude. Ah, yeah. oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turn my back for five seconds and then just piss off. <laughs> what is this? So, Jarjan sort of leans down onto the counter and his arm sort of rests against it. And he grabs the mug of ale and starts drinking again. And then he starts to relay the information he'd given him to Vanessa and Alice. And halfway through, he stops himself and he turns around and says, Oh, that's right. They also lost a member. 
and then Vanessa and Alice both at simultaneously go, Oh no! That's terrible! <laughs> Not on a day like this! Alright, cool. And then Jardin's like, Listen, why don't you all go and enjoy yourselves and I'll talk to these two about what you've described to me. And, uh, you'll want to make your way to the scribes. The customs office? Yeah. yeah. Check your weapons. And... That's fair. Yeah. Alright. Tobias is right. gonna uh, hide his wand in a pocket. <laughs> so I don't feel safe without my wand. I wonder if our trade goods are ready to come out. It's been an extra couple of days. That'd be nice. Yeah. Hopefully they will be. Yeah. Carly has uh, died, but at least I get my diamonds back. <laughs> <laughs> Would they have searched our bag of holding? They didn't search us at all when we came in. I have a question. Can I put something in the bag of holding without putting it in the extra dimensional space? Um... I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it just... Yeah, like... uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> finish and then I'll do it. Yeah, I finished. Ah, okay, sorry, I just remembered. Um, Tobias, like, is halfway out the door and he shouts, like, Damn it! And then turns around again and walks up to the captain and says... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, okay. We are all <laughs> so much. That's really funny. Oh my god. The mental image. Yeah! <laughs> oh fuck. I walk up, put a hand on his shoulder, and say. This keeps slipping our minds every time we're here, <laughs> but to the south, there's a town, um, what was it called again, guys? Reedon. Reedon. There's a town to south called Reedon. Uh, it's been destroyed by goblins, and it's haunted or something. Oh. I mean, we heard about the destruction of Reedon, but haunted? Yeah, uh... But, um, <laughs> Tobias and I, Thorin and I, um, and, uh, Carlius, uh, we, when we passed through it, we got, like, trapped, reliving the same day over and over again. Um, and all the people there are, uh, like, living shadows or something. Oh, I'm afraid this falls out of my, ex my area of expertise. I can't yeah. really. Oh, well, you know what? Hey, Vanessa, can you just draft this up and um, I'll pass it along to some of the other members? Maybe they'll figure something out. And she goes, Okay. Anything yeah. for you, Jarvin? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to go about fixing things, but I fi figured we should tell you what's happening there. It's just slipped our minds the last couple of times. No. Well, I appreciate the information. It's just the first time I've heard about it being haunted, that's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if everyone will have the uh, same experience. Carlius had a uh, girlfriend there, and I'm not sure if it, his connection to that place changed things for us or not, but mm. it might be worth looking into. Well, I mean, the convoy that was in L6 just passed through there, and we didn't hear any reports about it, so could just be an isolated incident but we'll look into it for sure thank you and finally cross that off my list of things to do <laughs> halfway out the door yeah. <laughs> actually we I almost did it again yeah. we said outside that we were gonna <laughs> did... okay guys we got this remember this time and we almost forgot again <laughs> um now that the convoy is back has is there any news of what happened to the survivors now like Survivors in L6. Yeah, the people who were left over after the war. You mean the refugees near the Trident, or actually in the L6 region itself? Just in general, like what happened to the citizens. 
Oh, you haven't heard any news about it yet. No, like, I'm, I'm asking Jedrin. Oh. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> usually, the, usually the town crier announces these things, but I assume that because they only just got back, he probably wants to verify his information. Because a lot of what he says tends to come straight from the mouth of Hjaldmir himself. Uh, of course. Well, thanks anyway. Yeah, You're very well, helpful. Oh, thank you guys, I'm glad you're safe on your first mission that wasn't successful, but even though someone died, <sighs> so technically it wasn't See, safe. Yeah, safe is a bit of an overstatement. And then he starts drinking it's, uh... out of his mug. This is going to affect our rankings. <laughs> he eyes Alice, and Alice just, with a grim frown, just looks a little lower to the floor. <laughs> oh boy. Ooh. I feel like we signed up for a job far above our capabilities. <laughs> well, this wasn't You should exactly really implement like a, like a star rating system for your jobs. Well, we did say it was high iron ice to steel. We had That's... hopes that perhaps some of you might have gathered some information about the Forest of Vita? And then well, suddenly we... Tobias remembers that Arcturius did exactly that, but then bailed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tobias just sighs, rests his head in his hand, palm to head. Uh, Arcturius uh, was in charge of that, but he... Uh, skedaddled before we left, didn't manage to tell us anything. Don't Someone do it, was Wex. breathing like he's gonna say something. <laughs> Don't do it, Wex. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> well, Moving on. Just like, uh, well, see, we just offer out the contracts. It's a little difficult for us to research every single contract just from our workload. So the bookstore is always open for you guys to go in and find out any information that might be relevant. So I might go look into that now. Keep that in mind the next time you try to go somewhere. Yeah. I might go look into that now if you guys want to enjoy, explore the festival. Hmm. Alright. Well, we've got to stop by the uh, customs office first. Or, I mean, we could just put all the stuff into this bag of holding here. Just, just saying. Hang on. You've got a bag of holding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is a conversation better had somewhere else. <laughs> like, not right in front of the captain. Oh, um, just, you just, have to just know kidding, that sir. it's common knowledge about bags of holding. What's that? Like, you guys know that you would probably know what a bag of holding does as well. Like, a lot of people would know. Because they distribute this right. out as one of the basic gears. I don't think if we're uh, stopped, yeah. it's like, it's not gonna... Although you do have it hidden in the, uh, quiver. Although, they'll probably want to... Can we at least have this conversation right. somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, thanks for your help, uh, Captain. Yeah. yeah. We'll check in... Uh, check in later, I suppose. All good. Best of luck to you. Thank you. And then, uh... Yeah. As the first person opens the door to Gerizdin's Union, you are suddenly pushed aside and trampled by a crowd of women rushing in and then you hear Jardin go a oh, of women. ladies two at a time please <laughs> and then the old crowd around him go oh my god it's Jardin ah, a missile class warrior and then, yeah he has a good time <laughs> how many arrows do I have <laughs> okay let's move on before long Sean noticed someone in a fit of <laughs> Jealous rage. I, I think so. I'm out of. I'm already out of here. Just like that. Oh, fuck this. Oh, yep. Off we go. No, no, no. It's like a boot print in the middle of his face. <laughs> mm. 
the shady alley is the best place to have this conversation if I were. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Gaius, as you get to about there. Oh, no, like past the corner. Oh, okay. So, look, about here. Yeah, uh, you come across a wall of guards who at first look at you, inspect you for a brief second, then just wave you on as they continue through. Okay. Then, as they pass you and they see the other three, the first guard raises a hand and says, Halt! Halting. I do so, yeah. I breathe a, oh dear Jesus, what have they done? (laughs) Who? A lot of you have to come with us. Come on. Uh, okay. Can I ask why? Can I ask why? to the why? customs office. Oh yeah, no, we were heading there. Yeah, we were just on our way. As is and then customary. He, he, he taps the... Uh-huh. One of the guards taps the captain on the back and then he turns around, looks at guys and goes, Oh, well, I suppose you too. Yeah, I should... Just to be fair. And then they start leading you towards the customs office. As was the custom. <laughs> Which was the fashion at the time. <laughs> you right there, Thorin? Nope. <laughs> like most people, he's probably half left. And then they just gesture for you. If I could set you on fire without consequence. (laughs) Yep, this is 100% fair. I walk inside. Alright, so once again, you're inside, and then the first scribe, Tungsten, he's like, Ah, do you guys have an adventurer's rank now? Be much easier to keep track of your things. Should speed up the process by quite a bit. Fantastic. Then, uh, the same process starts to happen and you are removed of every item except for your common clothes and gold. Okay, I don't and, try and hide anything. And they note everything down as you do so. Yeah, what's the rule again to try and uh, conceal things? Because I do have that super illegal poison still. Hey, no. Where is it then? I thought they smuggled it in the first time. Smuggle is a strong word to use. See, uh, this is going to be super out of character, meta game, etc, etc. Uh, Carlius was in the alleyway, and he was speaking to someone, saying, Hey, can you get my stuff back? And he goes, yeah, 10 gold. But for the other stuff, you need to talk to Lota. But Carlius never talked to Lota, so if you have illegal goods, they're gone now. Wonderful. I'll just uh, take that really expensive potent <laughs> I know, I know it sucks, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps um, that's something we should do for you. What's that? I said, perhaps that's something we should do for you. Go out find poison. No, go find loader. Oh, yeah. You want to do that anyway, Good right? Luck. Eh, not so much now. Uh, but yeah, before long, you guys clear out all your things, and then uh, as you start to leave... Actually, just before yeah. I do, um, will I be allowed to keep my glasses as the holy symbol? No. But I need these for my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> because they are actually uh, vision, gog- uh, vision glasses, but they just happen to have a holy... Uh, like, they just so happen to have been blessed as the holy symbol as well. The guard captain raises an eyebrow and says, Well, in that case, you'll have to follow me to Leicester's and provide you with mundane glasses. Oh. I hope you understand. It's a precaution. I don't really, but I'll accept the proposition. So, do we leave now, or...? Yes. Okay. Follow this guard, and then he waves his hand the one with the... Yeah, yep. And then he starts taking you to Leicester's. Uh, actually, before we go, can I quickly get an update on our trade goods? He looks up at you. Almost done. Maybe a day or two. 
We usually Fantastic. package it with the same documents that your Adventure Guilds register you as. So the next time you come cool. back or you talk to Agnes and she has your documents, your trade goods are ready. Cool. We still got that little bead, right? Oh yeah, of course. I think the buyer oh, has it. Yeah, I do. How do I know that name? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's in your documents <laughs> right here. I see it. Yeah. I've got a name tag on, actually. <laughs> Say hello, my name is Tobias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, so uh, for the sake of brevity, Gaius, you are led into Lester's goods and then he stands up. The guard sort of speaks something to him and you are provided with some glasses. They actually provide you with six and you sort of have to test out which one works with your vision. Yep. But eventually you do. And then the guard, the uh, Lester just says to you, Yeah, that's gonna be two silver. I'm not just gonna give glasses away for free. With all, with all due respect, I'd like to have the two silver back if I return them in one piece. Sounds fair. I can do that. I hand over the two silver. And he hands you glasses that work for you. Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> I just had a stupid idea. Oh, uh, actually, Thorin, as you're about to leave that doorway... I, I really wanted to... Okay, yeah, so I'm in the doorway. Yeah, as you're about to leave, the other guards sort of shuffle through letting everyone else but you pass and then they step forward somewhat menacingly oh. and then say oh, yeah hello. we're gonna need to talk to you so uh step okay back a bit. oh sorry Mwah. what's Keep what's going happening back. okay what's yeah. happening as tobias looks the other guards step in the way and then they say oh hold on this doesn't concern you and then they oh, shut the door he's a friend so <laughs> Oh. Any idea what that's about, Longshaw? Uh, no. Right. I'll just what, what, it, what exactly did your friend do to piss people off around here? I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're just kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you I can sort of understand because you got that certain look, but... <laughs> that je ne sais quoi. Yeah, je ne sais quoi, exactly. But... <laughs> Or whatever the equivalent is in Elven. But um, he doesn't give me that vibe. I just had an idea. If we're going to have like a, a conversation that nobody else should hear, should we move to a different room in the Discord? Yeah, I was actually going to suggest oh. that, but I was afraid people would get tired of doing it constantly. Before you get into that, I want to talk to this guard and say, uh, look, sir, my friend isn't... Is, is my friend in legal trouble or something? Because... Uh, if so, I'd like to be in there with him. He's not he's not very well versed in law and whatnot. He just says, He's my attorney! Don't worry. <laughs> They're just going to ask him a few simple questions. He should be able to answer this straightforward. Nothing complicated. Don't worry. That Can doesn't get... answer the question of whether it's legal trouble yeah. or whether it's just a personal Can I get an insight check on that? He says, It could be. It might not be. I don't know. I don't work for those guards. As you can see by my purple cape, I work for the city guards. <coughs> so, he thinks about it. Maybe he is in legal trouble. Oh do, no, do. that would be troublesome. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean Look, that. Do, do, you mind, uh, do you mind letting me in so I can just find out from them? No persuasion! Is... I don't actually have his stats. Wow, good on me. Give me a sec. <laughs> Uh, wow, that's really good, holy shit. <laughs> what counters persuasion again? Yeah. I think deception and stuff like that needs to be countered, but persuasion is just like if he thinks that's reasonable or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you yeah. could do I like mean, a will save? You can use insight to see if he's like just bullshitting you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll roll his insight. Oh, by one. He's just like... Oh, well, I suppose if the other guy's unable to talk properly, uh, I suppose you should be let in. Otherwise, what's the point of asking him questions that he can't answer? <sighs> Step on through, I suppose, and then he opens the door a small crack and lets you in. I'll drag you in. Now, 
and then they crowd the doorway yet again. Okay. Did you want to do the room thing, or...? It's up to you, I don't mind. I think it'd be great. Personally, I want to do it. It's up to you guys. Okay, you sure. Want. Doesn't bother me. Oh, okay, awesome. Alright, so it doesn't bother anyone? No? No? Come no. On. Okay, let's uh, go to the general channel. Like, Let's go to a general channel. <laughs> hey, alright, so, so as you guys sort of come into the room, and then the guard captain sees Tobias come through, and he gives you like a stern nod, almost as though like, slightly annoyed, but like, you know, he's just like, alright, fine, you're in, might as well address you too. And then he holds out a hand, and he just like, look, welcome to the Trident, and we appreciate that you are working for the Keras Deems Union. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, now, I as you that. Yeah. probably know, we do check in every single item, and I believe that when you first came through, you were with a man known as Carlius, but he is no longer with you. No. Is he this perished? Oh, okay. That tends to happen with people in your line of work. I understand that completely. Now, typically it takes a few years for people to obtain a citizenship to come and go freely. And obviously okay. with citizenships there are different tiers, you can bring different things in depending on what badges you get. There are ways to expedite this, but that's not the topic of conversation that I want to have today. I wouldn't mind having that conversation a bit later. He looks to Thorin and says, the topic of conversation I want to speak with you about is murder. Specifically murder of a government official. Oh. Okay, sure, I'll be glad to help. Well... You're directly tied to this murder. I am? Hopefully In I can fact, give some good information. And then you hear the other guys put their hands on the hilts of their swords. If you make any sudden movements, should at any point I feel threatened, we will end your life right here. But for now, I wish to simply speak to you. Okay. He grabs from his pocket a little leather pouch. Sorry. He grabs from his leather pouch a little pocket. He grabs from his leather pouch a little whistle, and he holds it dangling in front of him, and he says, do you recognize this? Because it was checked in under your name. Uh, vaguely? Is that the Mimic Whistle? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, I do recognize that. So, you know what this does? You yeah, we know, found it in a crypt. You know what happens when you were to blow it? Yeah? Are you aware that what it summons is able to summon itself? Without a master? No. That is right. something that I wish I knew. Wait, so it can summon another one of itself? Or it can just... Oh. Apparate itself? Yeah. We noticed that it has two forms. One is blue, the other makes it look like a normal chest. Yes. Whilst one of our halflings were going through the storage, we heard a bit of a commotion and found that the mimic had consumed the halfling before returning to being just a chest. Did he blow on the whistle? He did not, because he is not allowed to. It would be illegal. Are we allowed to destroy the whistle? Or is we it can. technically evidence? However, because I feel very to, unsafe having we that We need back. to get the full picture first. If you knew that this sure. whistle would summon something like this, why would you bring it into the Trident? We I mean, know it could summon itself. And just to interject, I don't, I don't know if it can summon itself. Like you said, the Halfling didn't blow the whistle because it's illegal. That doesn't necessarily mean he didn't blow it. 
Halfling should never work alone. Oh. If he did blow it, his partner would know. They could be covering for each other. There's no evidence that it can summon itself. I have, I have an easy solution for this. The other question is, are you aware that it consumes human flesh? No. Are you I thought it just that? ate. I thought it just ate everything. Are you aware that it can speak? No, I don't no. think it ever did that. Is that? You're actually like, do you truly yeah, believe it, that, or do you not remember? I, I guess I don't remember when you phrase it like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does, I don't remember it, it ever talking. Oh, okay. oh, it does speak. When was that? Uh, when you guys were in the bowels of, uh, not Berenbach, uh, under Archerton, in front of the big flesh wall, and when it first apparated itself. It was like, I'm hungry, and then it leapt over to eat a body. Ah, okay. But anyway, the guard goes, well, look, we don't want to keep you held here for too long. I'm just letting you know, because it's... Sorry, my internet's with... been dropping in and out really bad today. Oh, no, all good. He's just like, it's within my legal responsibility to let you know that I am confiscating this whistle, as well as various other substances that were checked in with your group. That, that's uh, fine you can, you can keep the whistle forever, I actually don't want it back knowing all of that. All right. yeah. um, can it just be destroyed and never touched yeah, again? Then you can be on your way, and I hope you don't cause us any trouble during the Festival um, of the Stars. We'd like everything to go smoothly for the people. I am curious as to what else is being confiscated there. Oh, only these substances, poisonous, venomous, highly illegal. Typically, you would get in big trouble with this, but you're fortunate that we found it on this day, for a lot of the laws are very lenient on the Festival of Stars. I look across at Tobias and I'm like, did that fucker plant that poison on me? Oh, it's not yours, it's Aiden's. No, I mean like Car oh yeah, I was gonna say I assumed Carlius was like using me as a mule. <laughs> and I turned to Tobias and be like, did Carlius use me as a that motherfucker? It wouldn't be out of character now that no. I think about it. Yeah, um turn back to the guard, uh bow, thank him very profusely. Uh very sorry for the trouble we've caused. Uh we didn't know that the missile was that dangerous and we didn't know that uh, we had been carrying substances, um, so thank you for your leniency. We will thoroughly question the other members of our group after this. Mm. Now, we'll contact you again after we finish interrogating the other halfling to get the full picture. At the very worst, you'll simply need to pay a fine. Uh, any ballpark number on what that fine might be so we can gather funds if we need to? Considering that the death of a halfling is involved, <sighs> close to 250 gold. That's definitely a hit, but I think we can... Yeah. We can, we can do what we have to make that right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Then without further it... ado... Or is there something else you wish to ask? Uh, you, you just want to put it out there, you absolutely have my permission to destroy the whistle. <laughs> yeah, that thing was way more dangerous than I thought it was. He nods. And then he opens oh, the door, and everyone goes back to the other channel. Alrighty. Sorry for keeping you hanging. Oh, good. Hopefully no one died in that hanging time. I, I died of boredom talking to Wags. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was afraid of that. But <laughs> then the other guys hey. with him. And then they, they, they start leaving. Alright, we walk out. And I just, like, as I'm walking out, I give Longshore a dirty look and keep moving. What was that all about? Uh, we got uh, smacked on the wrist a bit for the substances uh, that you had in your possession. <laughs> also, that missile that summons a mimic is really much more dangerous than we thought it was. And yeah, we we're... Get it back. I don't want it back, honestly. Turns out it can summon itself. Oh. Sorry, what and missile? It... We had a... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> It, it just goes like ashen faced. <laughs> yeah, it can summon it. its. Yeah, uh, 
It ate a halfling. Oh. Yeah, so we have lobbied for the whistle to be destroyed. And I mean, eating a halfling is no, like, great feat, though. Like, uh, like Thorin kind of gets a bit of a sheepish look and he goes, technically government official. So... It was, yeah, so it was hot getting, water. Was yeah, it could, bigger than the usual halfling? Or? No, but because government official, that makes things a bit more complicated. Either way, hopefully we never see the whistle again. Right. Yeah. Where is it, out of interest? Guards uh, took it, and I never want to see it again. <laughs> I don't know about you, Thorin, but I'm going to be suspicious of furniture for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really hope it's not still on the loose. Oh, fuck, we didn't ask. <laughs> it's just like a chest runs past, like, oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, Kalash I... just has... Go on. So I, I see a chest down here, maybe that's it. We should, um, investigate. Kalash <laughs> just has the most ridiculously sheepish, look, like, confused look. Like, Whistle eats a halfling. Fucking what? Longshore, did you sneak that vial into my bag? <clears throat> Wait, which, which vial is this? The, uh... One that I'm not going to talk about when we're standing next to guards. Let's go over here a little bit. And then you suddenly realize you're standing directly outside the guard barracks. That's fine. There's, <laughs> as long as we whisper, as long as there's no one within. Hiding in plain sight, my friend. Yeah. I like, I like lean in and whisper, so hopefully no one with outside five feet can even hear this. Yeah, what are you guys talking about? Huh? Oh. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Hey. How's your day been? Yeah, not bad. Just turn in for the day. It must have been busy with the festival and everything. Yeah, have oh, fun, guys. Enjoy. Yeah, well, thank you. You too. A social norms investigator just fucking what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you guys talking about? Um, how fucking weird you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not being arrested and executed for smuggling poison and a deadly magical beast into the city. So, yeah, I want to lean into lean into Longshore and be like, the vial that you snuck in, the one with the fucking super poison that you got from Adito. Oh yeah. Did you sneak that into my bag? I don't think I did. Did I? I feel I'm like pretty sure I gave that to like the thieves guild person. Well, apparently they found it in my stuff. That's unfortunate. Yes, it is. So long and short of it, we may have a 250 gold fine on the horizon, uh, depending on what they find out about the uh, mimic. Hopefully they, ha yeah. Hopefully they have a couple paladins who can cast Zone of Truth. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it'll mean that we can testify and they'll know for sure that we're not lying. Yeah. So how how do we benefit from that? Well, it means hopefully we can get away for, with from it without being in trouble. Because they'll know that we did nothing wrong. I'm still not 100% convinced that the mimic can actually summon itself. I think yeah, me neither. I'm pretty sure. A blow. Yeah, so that is not the mimic. Well, it honestly makes me concerned that my mithril will still be there when we get it checked in. Because if someone was going through our stuff and was like fucking with it, then. So just imagine that it's like an office prank gone wrong. Like, oh, I'm sneak <laughs> up behind Jono and blow this whistle. <laughs> Jono! <laughs> Uh, Jonna! <laughs> no! It was two days from retirement! <laughs> As they all are. Uh, and at this point, I'm just going to back away slowly because I realise it's not a conversation I want to be in. Did they check my wine skin in? I think you still have food and drink. No, he said everything except clothes and gold. Yeah, bugger. Wow, well that wine's just fucked. <laughs> and so is the fucking skin that it was in. They're both going to be awful when I get them back. All those rabbits I caught. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's going to hand us, like, a leaking bag of slop. Like, yeah, you... Here are your perishables. They have perished. Perish? <laughs> yeah. They're just going to hold out a bowl that's just, like, <laughs> brown and grey and red. Just like a dagger floating on top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, um... <coughs> Positions. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I'm going to go to the bookshop, see what I can find out about the forest. That's a good uh, idea. Snake. I will come come with you. Oh, cool. Yeah, I may as well come with. Oh, you finished conversation? Okay. Yeah, so, sorry about that. We had a lot to unpack there. 